um, Dr. Ursula Running Bear is an enrolled member of the Shikanju Lakota Oyate uh, Rosebud Sioux Tribe. She's a research instructor for the Centers for American Indian and Alaska Native Health located in the Colorado School of Public Health at the University of Colorado. Uh, Dr. Running Bear is a recent graduate from the Clinical Science Program at University of Colorado and her research interests include American Indian and Alaska Native Health with a special interest in quality of life, alcohol detoxification and treatment, and innovative and culturally relevant interventions. Her professional experience is based upon work with American Indian and Alaska Native organizations and tribal governments in various capacities, ranging from direct services to data collection for the U.S. government, as well as academic research. Dr. Running Bear is committed to research that generates solutions that drive wellness for American Indians and Alaska Native people. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ursula Running Bear. Good morning. Thank you all for attending the seminar today. Um, so, I'll just move into my presentation. So, my secondary, in, or my pilot study was a secondary data analysis. And I looked at two specific health comes, physical health status and mental health status. So, today in my presentation, I'll briefly review my sample. And then I'll talk about the two outcomes that I looked at. And then I'll also briefly review the independent variables, the two primary independent variables associated with each outcome that I was interested in studying. And then I'll look at the results and then discuss what I think are some next steps. So the sample that I used came from AI SuperFIP. And so the purpose of AI SuperFIP was to collect data on the prevalence of alcohol, drugs, mental health disorder, disorders, and service utilization in two AI populations, two American Indian populations. And so AI SuperFIP collected data on Northern Plains tribes, but it also collected data um, on, in the Southwest sample. So for this study, I specifically looked at the Northern Plains sample. And this sample included 1,638 males and females aged 15 to 54 who were living on their reservation or within 20 miles of their reservation. And the data was collected from 1997 to 1999. So as I mentioned, I looked specifically at two outcomes. The first one was a physical component summary score, which is a measure of physical health status. And the second was the mental component summary score, which is a measure of um, mental health status. And they both come from the SF36. So you can score the SF36 to get these two specific outcomes. And scores range from 0 to 100, with higher scores indicating better functioning and lower scores indicating poorer functioning. So in deriving our scores, we used the established algorithms, and we also standardized. So we wanted to standardize because there are other studies, and we wanted to make them comp our results comparable to the other studies that are out there that also use PCS and MCS. So the first question I was really interested in looking at is if boarding school attendance has a relationship to physical health status. Um, and really I wanted to know is those that attended boarding school, is their physical health status poorer than those that didn't attend boarding school? And I realized I didn't really have a, a slide on what boarding school is or was American Indian boarding schools. And I'm not really sure if everyone's familiar with boarding schools. Um, OK, good. So <laughs> I'll move on. So again, my primary independent variable, the variable I'm most interested in seeing if there's a relationship with physical health status, was boarding school attendance. So in SuperFIP, the question was, did you ever attend boarding school, yes or no? 
So then I also used various other variables I controlled for in my model that um, are often used in similar studies, age, gender, marital status, education, employment, poverty level. And then I also decided to include measures of physical health and measures of um, mental health. And these were counts, the number of physical health conditions and the number of mental health disorders. So the physical health conditions was a variable that was a count of 31 um, common conditions. And then the DSM-4 disorders was, I believe, a count of nine different disorders. Um, and I chose to include these because um, it's shown in the literature that the more physical health problems you have and the more mental health problems you have, the lower your health status will be. So, sorry, it's jumping ahead. <laughs> so I started out with linear regression since the outcome was a continuous variable. And then I moved into path analysis. And I'll get into the reasons why I moved into path analysis when I uh, present the results. Um, so I, went in, I moved into path analysis and looked at specifically mediation. So my results did, oh, sorry, it's moving ahead. My um, results did show that those that attended boarding school do have lower physical health status than those that don't. And the relationship is mediated by the number of physical health conditions. So, and so on this slide, I wanted to show you how I decided that I needed to look at mediation. So in building my model, I did it in blocks. I added variables in blocks. So the first block was, did you ever attend boarding school, which is basically just a bivariate relationship of boarding school attendance and physical health status. I then added in all the demographic variables, which was model two. And then to that, I added the socioeconomic variables, which was model three. And then I added the number of DSM-4 disorders, which you see there on the slide, and that's model four. And then model five was the number of self-reported health problems. And so the variable, again, that I'm interested in, is, in looking at is, did you ever attend boarding school? And so if you're looking at the results, you can see that the coefficient, I have a one point, negative 1.23, and it's statistically significant. But after including the number of self-reported health problems, the coefficient reduces drastically, and it's also insignificant. So this is telling me, when I look at it, that when I compare the two models, that there is a huge reduction in the coefficient, and it's also become insignificant, which means that there is a potential for full mediation with number of self-reported health problems mediating the relationship. So um, I decided, to, when I looked at this and I saw it, first I saw just this and I was like, uh-oh. But then I looked at everything else and I thought, OK, it, possibly there's some mediation going on. So then I moved into a path analysis. And so the path analysis showed that there is not a direct relationship when I have number of physical health conditions in the model, there is not a direct relationship between boarding school attendance and physical health status. Um, once I add in number of physical health conditions, the relationship becomes mediated. So if you attended boarding school, you have more physical health conditions than if you didn't attend boarding school. And the more physical health conditions you have, the lower your physical health status. So the relationship is there, but with, with this variable um, in the model, it makes it appear as though it, it's insignificant. But the results show it, that it's mediated. So this is the third study that found um, a relationship between boarding school attendance and poor physical health status. There were two other studies conducted in Canada. And the most recent was CASPER 2014, which was a national large national study, and she also found a mediation in her analyses too. 
So um, I also think now that we have established a relationship between poor physical health status and boarding school attendance, that we can move on to looking at other associations. So in SuperFIP, not only did they ask about boarding school attendance, they also asked if you attended boarding school, um, did you experience punishment for use of language? Were you able to practice traditional cultural t traditions? How far away from your family were you? How often were you able to visit your family? Um, so I think that would be the next step to look at is the association of these variables to physical health status. So the interesting thing that I found is that the physical component summary score, the physical health status variable did not show a relationship with boarding school attendance. And so I started thinking about why that was. And again, maybe the relationship might be mediated, or perhaps we need to look more specifically at mental health variables. Um, so for instance, anxiety or depression, these kinds of variables might be associated with um, boarding school attendance. So the second study or analyses I did was um, looking at two spirituality measures and the relationship to mental health status. And so I wanted to see if higher scores on these spirituality measures would be related to a better mental health, better mental health status. Oops. So I looked at two um, independent variables in this relationship or in this analysis. And was one was a culturally oriented. Uh, measure. And so this measure was developed in focus groups of tribal members who use their knowledge, their, perce their perceptions, experience with cultural spirituality to um, endorse eight questions. And so the eight questions um, revolve around balance in life, living in harmony, feeling connected to others, feeling like you're living a good life or the right, living a, your life the right way, giving and receiving, being a person of integrity. So um, the measure that they endorsed was very similar to other uh, a measure that has been used in the general population as well. So then I also decided to look at a more conventional measure of spirituality, which is often seen in the religion spirituality literature, which is the midlife development inventory. And so the midlife development inventory had four questions that revolved around the importance of religion and spirituality to you, yourself personally, how important it would be that your children participate, how often you um, participated, and how often you seek guidance and comfort in religion or spirituality. Um, and so again, the focus group members reviewed several measures of conventional me measures of spirituality, and they felt this one was the most appropriate. So this is the one that was used in the study. So I also used the exact same variables in this analysis as I did in the previous one, again, looking at the specific health variables because they are known to be associated with poor mental health status. And so the results showed that higher scores on the culturally oriented spirituality measure were associated with better mental health um, scores and that there was a direct and indirect relationship. And interestingly, there was not an, not an association found between the MIDI or the Midlife Development Inventory and mental health status. And so just to make sure I wasn't missing anything in my analysis, because I'm including two spirituality measures as independent variables, I looked at the correlation. And they were correlated, a little bit correlated, 0 .2, about 0 0.21 
I then decided um, just to make sure I, again, wasn't missing anything. I took out the culturally oriented spirituality measure from my model, and I ran it with just the MIDI. And it was not significant. And so I thought, well, let me look just a little closer and see if maybe there's an interaction between the two measures. So I created an interaction variable, and that also was not significant. So again, since I found mediation in this, since it looked, so I found, I found evidence that there was mediation. So again, I, comparing model three or model four, oh, sorry, comparing model four and model five and looking at the culturally oriented spirituality measure, um, you can see that there is a marked reduction in the coefficient, although in model five it stays significant. So that to me is indicating that there's the potential for partial, what's called, called partial mediation, and that the number of DSM-4 disorders is mediating the relationship. So this um, analysis was built exactly like the previous one where I added in blocks of variables, um, and then I looked at model four and model five, and then decided that it was appropriate to at least look at mediation. So. I did look at mediation, and the results show that there is a direct relationship. The higher um, your cultural spirituality scores are, the better your mental health status will be. And then I also, uh, the results also show that the more, oh, the higher your score, the lower, the fewer number of mental health conditions you'll have. But the more mental health conditions you have, the lower your mental health status will be. So in this analysis, I think the next step is, so what I do, what we know about this sample is that there are three types of people um, that participate in spiritual or religious, religious practice. And so there's the people that are uh, practice culturally oriented spirituality, there's a Christian group, and then there's the Native American church group. And so this is what I'm saying is also based on published work by Dr. Eva Garut. So she um, looked at this and found that there were these three types of spirituality groups in the sample. And so as I, knowing that, and then as I was um, building my models and seeing the results, I wondered if particularly if for the Christianity group, if the MIDI would be a good indicator of, um, if it, it would predict better for that group than some of the other groups. So I think that is um, one next step. And then again, I think we can dive a little deeper into this, uh, since the mental component summary score is an overall measure of mental health status, I think maybe we can look at some specific mental health indicators, like perhaps alcohol, alcohol abuse, um, depression, anxiety, other, mental, other specific mental health disorders. So, And then I would just like to acknowledge my research mentors who helped um, facilitate the analyses and develop manuscripts based on these analyses. And then I'd also like to Excuse me. <laughs> so I would also like to thank the AI Superfit team. And this is a team that collected data for this study. And they put a lot of work into it. And I really appreciate the work that they have done because it's allowed me to look at the relationships that I looked at. And it's also uh, going to allow me to look at this data further. And then also Kirka for their support. In uh, funding my pilot study.